Yo, yo, yo. What's good, y'all? Back with another one, man. This one right here is a little crazy, but really crazy, man. They just had word out about your boy Diddy, man. They said that he was with a nine-year-old, man. As young as nine. The son was 12, man. They had a whole bunch of stuff that they were talking about him, man. About how he would let them in unless they were taking the drugs or the drinks beforehand so they can go to the party. The nine-year-old was trying to get a career in the music industry. Man, this junk is crazy, y'all. Man, what's going on, man? Like, man, oh, man. You know, and then they got Oprah tied to him. You know, Steve Harvey is tied to him. You know, Tyler Perry. Man, they got everybody that's tied to him. And I got to show y'all all this information, all this stuff that's coming out, man. Like, this is crazy, man. This dude's doing young kids, man. Young kids, man. Like, bro, you could find somebody that really like whatever you like, man. This is crazy. I got to show y'all this, man. I got to connect this video with this right now, man. I'm keeping this one short and simple, man. I don't know what else to say, man. I don't know what else to say, man. Just feel sad, man. It's crazy. Y'all hit the comments on this one, man. We're going live tomorrow. Y'all got to check it out, man. Come check me out and drop these comments, man. Subscribe to the channel, man. Check out this next video I got to bring out. That's going to bring out a lot more evidence, man. It's just it's breaking me down right now. I can't even really talk about it. So y'all tune into it. Typically, the victim is lured into a situation where he or she is given a drink. Typically, that drink uh, reported by these victims is apparently laced with something. Once that drink takes effect, the perpetrators perform all kinds of sexual acts on the victims, many times passing him or her around as other people watch and enjoy the show and then leave the victim ashamed, confused, injured, and wondering what happened. Names that we're gonna name, assuming that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told, are names that will shock you. No, the defendants in these cases we're gonna file will include anyone, of course, who engaged in the assault or exploitation, anyone who participated in such in any way, anyone who encouraged or facilitated this conduct, anyone who was in the room and watched it happen, but made no effort to stop it. Any venue or venue owner who was aware of what was going on, but failed to stop it. Any individual or entity who knew about the conduct and benefited from it, but did nothing to report it or stop it. And any individual or entity who covered it up or helped cover it up. Another instance, another minor uh, told allegedly by Sean Combs, that he would make him a star, but needed a visit with him in private about it, away from uh, his parents. Once uh, they were in a private area, allegedly Mr. Combs made uh, the victim uh, perform oral sex upon him. Uh, another incident, uh, an individual 15 years old at the time, flown uh, to New York City to attend a party, uh, was drugged, and then taken into a private room, uh, allegedly in the presence of Mr. Combs, uh, where this uh, female individual minor was raped and then other individuals took turns raping her. Okay, more bad news for Diddy, a whole new set of problems. The most successful trial lawyer in Texas, Tony Busby, is now representing over 50 people suing Diddy some of them minors. He expects more people to join the suit. He expects more people to be implicated. He's talking about a press conference next week. Yeah, we're talking about stuff that happened at Freak Offs. On his Instagram, Busby's talking about depraved debauchery committed by the powerful against minors and the weak. Busby's a Marine. He was a federal judge. He is an incredibly successful trial lawyer. He's a serious dude. So Diddy's freedom is gone. His wealth is gone. His legacy is gone. This is a fall from grace that they will talk about hundreds of years from now. 
the man went from a mansion on Star Island to one of the worst jails in America. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us with people claiming, people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. After vetting, we now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants as we file these individual cases. And you should know, to the extent the clients feel comfortable, we also intend to make these individuals available to the authorities, specifically to the FBI. And you should also know a few of them have already been spoken to by the FBI. Now before we discuss the nature of the claims and claimants themselves, let me comment on the large volume of calls we have received since our first announcement. Even before the indictment of Sean Combs, we had received a small volume of calls and had screened a handful of cases. After the indictment of Sean Combs and the announcement that we were pursuing these claims, the floodgates opened. People who wouldn't otherwise, for a variety of reasons, are now stepping forward to make their voices heard and to pursue justice. I have never read 14 pages that contained so much many shocking information and allegations. One, two, three. This is the type of indictment you would expect from someone in the mafia, not somebody who runs a clothing line. Matter of fact, you can call me Sean John. An alcohol brand. Let's be clear. It's a rock, it's for the culture. Someone who was at the top of the hip hop world. What y'all wanna baby. do? Wanna be ballers, shot callers, brawlers. To hear charges of transportation, of prostitution, sex trafficking, it was pretty astonishing. You know, you mentioned the mafia. The mafia tends to operate underground. Diddy operated way above ground for 16 years, according to the feds. And there were maybe whispers about this, but none of this came to light. The reality is Diddy has had run-ins with the law several times, and it seems he always has gotten away with it. So this was really just a buildup. He was, of course, gonna operate in plain sight because nothing ever happens to him until now. I guess I'd say America loves a story of a good rise. America loves a story of a, of a huge fall. And this is certainly up there, you know, with, with any that we've seen. But, um, you know, I certainly didn't have any of this stuff on my bingo card covering Puffy for, you know, over a decade. There's a lot you can say about the guy, but, you know, this stuff just didn't come up in my reporting. And uh, I think it took all of us by surprise. Well, if he really was filming everybody, I mean, he had a lot of people at those parties, right? Interestingly enough, these parties were not merely social events, but a strategic tool. Oprah is rumored to have leveraged the information gathered at these gatherings to manipulate business negotiations and secure favorable outcomes. Her vast real estate and business ventures benefited from this underhanded tactic, as rivals were systematically discredited and removed from the playing field. One particularly harrowing account comes from a young artist who attended one of these parties. She described being introduced to Oprah by Diddy, feeling star, struck, and honored. However, as the night progressed, she found herself in a nightmare. I was offered drinks and what I thought were harmless party favors, she recalled. Before I knew it, I was in a room with hidden cameras and things were happening that I never agreed to. This victim story echoes many others, painting a chilling picture of manipulation and betrayal. What no one expected was the level of sophistication involved in these operations. Diddy's properties, both in Los Angeles and Miami, were equipped with state-of-the-art surveillance systems. Hidden cameras in every room ensured that nothing went undocumented. This archive of footage, featuring some of the most prominent names in entertainment, is rumored to be the backbone of their blackmail scheme. 
And in this lawsuit, he claims that essentially P. Diddy was the Epstein of the rap industry. As more victims come forward, the magnitude of the scandal grows. One source, speaking under the condition of anonymity, claimed that the footage includes not only artists and musicians, but also high-profile politicians and international dignitaries. The reach of this operation is global, the source stated. It's not just about Hollywood. It's about power and control on a massive scale. The implications of these allegations are staggering. If proven true, Oprah's involvement in such a scheme could topple her empire. Already, there are whispers in the industry, with former associates distancing themselves and sponsors reconsidering their partnerships. The public, too, is reeling from the shock. How could the woman who stood for empowerment and integrity be entangled in such nefarious activities? Uh, it's just crazy. Just read, read. One particularly damning piece of evidence comes from a former employee of Diddy's who claimed to have witnessed Oprah giving explicit instructions for party preparations. She knew exactly what was happening and was an active participant. The employee alleged she wasn't just a guest, she was a planner. This revelation adds a new layer to the scandal, suggesting that Oprah's involvement was far more direct than initially believed. Could it be that the philanthropic icon has a dark side that has remained hidden for decades? As the investigation continues, the public is left to grapple with this possibility. The juxtaposition of Oprah's public persona with these allegations create a cognitive dissonance that is difficult to reconcile. The reason why is because they gathered so much evidence, what supposedly they gathered so many videos and laptops and also electronic devices. Interestingly enough, Oprah's reputation has been shrouded in controversy long before these latest allegations surfaced. Delving into her past, one can uncover a series of criticisms and disputes that paint a more complex picture of the media mogul. For instance, Dave once found himself at the center of a fabricated narrative purportedly exposing Oprah as a handler for Hollywood elites. It was completely outside of my frame of reference. I've been in show business since I was 14 and uh, I've heard the stories. This claim, although proven false, gained traction among conspiracy theorists and gossip circles, highlighting the enduring skepticism around her influence and connections. I mean, I'm a conspiracy there is to a degree. Like when I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. What no one expected was the resurgence of these old accusations now seemingly validated by new allegations. Oh, why you think ain't nobody saying nothing? They're not bashing him. Uh, they're oh, not unfollowing him. They're not nothing. Man, they would delete my videos off their platform. Think about it. They would delete <laughs> my videos off their platform. They won't, yep. they won't even invite me when he talk about people homie these allegations have always been there so are they trying to homie they've been ignoring this turning the blinds out forever that's why i came attacking the industry the culture the community and nigga push back and everything out of the man it's, man it's been five years and it unfolded and it's still no pushback it's still no mother pushback against puffy None, homie. Uh, even when Charlemagne got him on the breakfast club and asked him about the video, when he said, I love how you be scrambling and scraping it. Man, he didn't yeah. give him no real pushback, homie. Nigga, even when Cassie came out, nigga, wasn't nobody at first. Nigga, they were still rocking with Puffy. So think about Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, uh, Barack Obama. Nigga, remember Puffy was with them with the rock the vote. All of this have always hovered over Puffy's head as a dark cloud. And they know this to be true. But nigga, they turn the blinds eye. That night when we were at, you know, my Grammy party, and it was Puffy. It really was Puffy, Diddy, all of them. In the mid-80s. I opened myself up to the possibility that I could have a relationship with a man, as well as the two that I had. Sean Diddy Combs is potentially facing significant prison time due to serious charges related to sex trafficking, exploitation, and racketeering. His mentor and accomplice, Clive Davis, has allegedly instructed his legal team to take strategic steps, fearing that the bad boy executive may implicate him in the ongoing case. If convicted on all counts, Diddy could face a minimum of 15 years in prison, with the possibility of a life sentence. Rumors suggest that Clive Davis, who is also said to be Diddy's longtime secret lover, may be the mastermind behind many of Diddy's illegal activities, and is currently walking on shaky ground. Both figures have been linked to dubious industry practices, including the elimination of artists and leveraging their power in the music industry to sabotage and- Oh, they got a Diddy hotline, I'm done. Thank you. I want you now to hear from my co-counsel, Andrew Van Arsdale. Uh, you know we've, we've created a sexual abuse hotline. 
Uh, and I want him to visit with us just a few moments about how that works. Yo, they got a Diddy hotline. I'm done. I'm... Thank you, Tony. I got to um, call like this Tony shit. said, my name is Andrew Van Arsdale. I'm the managing partner of ABA Law Group. Uh, we have offices in uh, California, Montana, and North Chat, let me call this, this hotline. I just want to see what it's hitting for. I ain't going to hold you. I ain't going to hold you. I ain't going to hold you. Move, nigga. Is that 200? They got a hotline in the background, gang. 7474. Let me see. I'm going to see what this shit is hitting for. The phone stop ringing. Hey, Diddy Abuse Helpline. This call is being recorded, and your responses will be recorded exactly as you state them and reviewed by a. What the bumble clot? Wait, there's. This shit. Yo, I swear. I called it now. I swear. I'm doing it again. I hung up. I'm calling it. Oh, it's busy now. Call back. The peep? Yo, chat, I can't believe that shit. Oh, it's busy. I shouldn't have hung up. Now the other people who got, got touched are going to get there before me. I want to report. more chilling is that it's not just Steve's attendance at these parties that's under scrutiny. There are whispers, allegedly from credible sources close to the investigation, that Steve wasn't just a passive bystander. According to these sources, the FBI has been gathering evidence for years, and they've interviewed multiple witnesses who claim Steve actively participated in some of the most shocking and illegal activities that went down at these events. We're talking about things that, if proven, could completely ruin his career and lead to serious legal consequences. Why doesn't the government want him to turn himself in? Because then they can't ask for detention. So they go and they arrest him. They arrest the guy who came to New York to turn himself in. For now, Steve has remained tight-lipped about all of this. He's not issued any public statement, and his representative have been suspiciously quiet. But behind the scenes, you can bet his legal team is working overtime to figure out how to navigate the storm. The fact that Steve fled the country suggests he knows there's a real possibility that he could be implicated in this scandal. After all, if he truly had nothing to worry about, why wouldn't he just stay put and defend himself? We all saw it posted yesterday all over our social media pages. Cassie filed a lawsuit in New York City against Diddy. Yikes. She's claiming she was stuck in a decade-long cycle of abuse. What makes this even more shocking is the sheer contrast between Steve's squeaky clean public image and the allegations now swirling around him. This is a man who has built his brand on being relatable, trustworthy, and full of down-to-earth wisdom. He's the last person anyone would expect to be caught up in something like this. But the more we learn about what allegedly went on at Diddy's parties, the more it seems like anyone who is regularly in attendance could be involved. He controlled every aspect of her life. He is accused of frequently beating her and would hide her in hotel rooms for days until the bruising and signs of abuse were gone. And let's not forget, Steve's close relationship with Diddy only adds fuel to the fire. Over the years, the two have been seen together at numerous events, and there's been no shortage of public admiration between them. Steve has even praised Diddy's entrepreneurial spirit and credited him as an inspiration. But now, with Diddy behind bars and facing serious charges, that relationship is suddenly looking a lot more suspicious. And in this lawsuit, he claims that essentially P. Diddy was the Epstein of the rapping. The real question on everyone's mind is this. What does Steve have to hide? Is it possible that he was merely a guest at these parties and had no idea what was really going on? Or, as the rumors suggest, was he a willing participant in the activities that have now led to Diddy's downfall? The truth is still up in the air, but as more details emerge, it's becoming harder and harder to give Steve the benefit of the doubt. The fact that the FBI has reportedly been investigating Diddy's network for years means that they're not just looking at him. They're looking at everyone who's ever been closely associated with him. And Steve, with his long-standing friendship and numerous public appearances alongside Diddy, is definitely in the spotlight. If these rumors are true, Steve could be facing much more than just a PR crisis. He could be facing criminal charges that would destroy everything he's built over the past few decades. And I remember, like, I don't know if you know his, his what his voice sounds like, but like, I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. As the investigation continues, one thing is clear. The truth about Steve Harvey's involvement in this scandal is bound to come out eventually. Whether or not he's guilty of any wrongdoing, the fact that his name is being thrown around and connected New allegations today of sexual assault and exploitation by Combs. For the first time, we are hearing about victims who say they were minors when they were allegedly assaulted by the music star. The youngest allegedly just nine years old. The allegations were revealed today by attorneys representing more than 100 alleged victims who are preparing to sue. So let's bring in NBC News Entertainment correspondent Chloe Malas right now. So Chloe, we know there is currently a press conference underway. We do have a live picture of that. Can you just walk us through these new allegations? 
Combs and tell us if we've heard from Combs yet. So the individual that you see on the screen right now, that is an attorney based out of Houston, Texas, and his name is Tony Busby. He's been a part of some very well-known litigation uh, over the years involving a BP oil spill, even involving the Astroworld Music Festival uh, crisis where some individuals were killed during a stampede. So he um, has made headlines before, but this is uh, pretty shocking. So he claims at this, is claiming right now at this press conference that he has had over 3,000 individuals reach out to his law firm in Houston, Texas, that he and his team have been vetting these claims, that now they are representing over 120 accusers, and that over the next 30 days, they will begin to file different civil suits, that this is not a class action lawsuit, that they are going to uh, continue to vet these allegations, but right now they feel strong about these. So he also said today that it's not just Combs that will be named as a defendant, that there will be other high profile individuals, some household names. He says, quote, many powerful people. Mm. There are many dirty secrets. This is LeBron. LeBron! LeBron, ain't no party like a Diddy party, right? Yeah, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah, that's yeah. what's up. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no party like a Diddy party, LeBron. Uh, ain't no party like a Diddy party, right, LeBron? When this is done, we gonna drink a couple of bottles of the most premium wine. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Together and talk the most shit. Please. Please. You know. we, got, we got shit to talk. <laughs> yes, you sir. Yes, sir. Please. 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 You know. Okay. 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 Well, we need more room. Ooh, I, I see you, King. Hey, do you have any response to the Diddy situation whatsoever? What do you, what do you make of it? I, I've never met him, so I really have nothing. Is it shocking to you, like being in Hollywood this long? It, it does, do you think it hinders or hurts Hollywood in general? No, I'm, I'm not up to speed on everything, so there's really no need for me to comment. Well, you're one of the greatest own owners in sports, and we look forward to this season. Yeah. Yep. Take care. Maybe what's starting to happen in hip hop is this: you get these three or four big companies that comes in, and they're almost doing a coup on the music industry. These companies that are buying these people's catalog have no real stake in hip hop. But what have they done? They've got it to a point where the majority of current acts are basically out of here. They're all coming under fire. They're all silently retiring. They're just resigning. They're stepping out. Didi's about to go to jail. Uh, um, Jay is like quiet as a church mouse. That nigga is in Bali doing some other shit. Maybe the way to get these people to start cashing out and sell their catalog is to expose all of these executives or get them out of the way. The rest of them are now gracefully retired. These niggas worked like 98 years. Now everybody wants to retire. Everyone wants to take a break. Everybody is, is running for the hills. But while all this is happening, there's some companies out there dropping big bucks. So when I look at the companies buying up the back catalog and then I see the shambles that the current music industry that's continuing the catalog is currently in, it feels like almost a coup in a way for some really powerful people to get back control of music. And also, in the meanwhile, rid themselves of the current crop. Nobody's talking about the fact that old Kamala Harris has ties to the diddler. And his Howard parties, where a lot of AKAs attended. Maybe they're all ordering pizza again. Jay-Z being exposed, the streets are now talking about one of Jay-Z's biggest secrets that could ruin everything for him. And that's word of his outside babies. Y'all know how there have been reports of Jay-Z cheating on Beyonce? Well, there are also some lesser known rumors about how he has multiple outside babies on her. While he allegedly paid some of his supposed baby mamas off, there is one who's still fighting to be acknowledged by Jay-Z and that's a young man called Ramir Satterthwaite. So for anyone who hasn't been keeping up with this drama, Ramir is saying that back in the 90s, Jay-Z and his mom Wanda had a little fling. Apparently they did use protection but it didn't work and that's how Ramir came into the picture. Wanda couldn't get in touch with Jay-Z after that because they lost contact. When Ramir was born, her boyfriend at the time ended up signing the birth certificate. According to an insider, her on-off boyfriend at the time, Robert, knew the baby wasn't his but put his name on the birth certificate while Wanda was unconscious recovering from the birth. Initially he felt sorry for Wanda but later he used it so he could collect extra food stamps and benefits. 
Both were minors at the time, so he shouldn't have signed anything. Ramirez has been spilling even more tea, saying that when he was just eight, his mom Wanda dropped the bomb that Jay-Z was his real dad. She apparently tried everything to reach him, hoping he'd step up and take responsibility, but kept getting shut down by lawyers and publicists. But Wanda was a fighter. She didn't back down. She took the legal route and went after Jay-Z in court to find out if he was really Ramirez's biological father. Unfortunately, the judge threw the case out, saying the court didn't have jurisdiction. Sadly, Wanda passed away not long after, but before she did, she signed a sworn affidavit declaring that Sean Carter, aka Jay-Z, was indeed Ramirez's father. you think all this would finally push Jay-Z to take some action, but nope, he's been silent. So Ramirez, with the help of his guardian, Lily Coley, decided to file a civil lawsuit in December 2014, revealing they've been trying to get Jay-Z to agree to a DNA test. By this point, the drama had been simmering for four years. Jay-Z maintained he wasn't the father, yet for some strange reason, he wouldn't take the test. Like seriously, you'd think he'd just get it over with, right? Now this lawsuit has been dragging on for about 10 years, 14 if you include Wanda's initial lawsuit, and Jay-Z still refusing. That's pretty suspicious. Ramirez was upset about the situation and he agreed to do a sit-down interview with The Sun Online, where he denied that he was after Jay-Z's money, saying, I don't want money or anything like that from Jay-Z, I just want him to finally tell the truth to the world. He's supposed to be a positive role model for our community. He stands there screaming Black Lives Matter, well tell the truth and take responsibility. And if you say I'm not your son and nothing ever happened with my mom, then just take the test. If you are telling the truth, then why is this your first answer whenever you're asked to take a paternity test? No. His guardian, Lily, also spoke, and we finally found out something interesting about the situation, and that's the fact that Jay-Z had knocked Wanda up when she was only 16 and he was 22. Yeah, the math was starting to math, and Lily said, Wanda was only 16 when she allegedly met Sean, but she may have told him she was older. She fell pregnant but had no idea how to contact him. To be fair, Lily did reveal that Wanda told Jay-Z she was 18, so he had no idea about her real age. But even if it wasn't technically his fault, it was still... Did he stop calling my goddamn phone? I ain't have to do with that. Oh yeah, Jay says stop calling them two motherfuckers. And you better not kept them tapes or Emma let them know what you did to JD. Yeah, yeah, take that, take that. You, people love Maybe. you ever been to one of Diddy parties? Yeah, I've, I've, I've been in attendance. I've been in attendance. Not, hey, what, what the fuck you smirking for? How you saying that? I ain't, no. nigga, I've been in attendance. He just asked your regular question. That's all questions. I said. That's all I said. I said, I've been in attendance. I have been in attendance. We never been. We just asked him. We just yeah, asked yeah. him. As soon as you asked, he said, "You had fun." I ain't seen that. Yet. Yeah, you did. Huh? I ain't seen that. Yeah, yeah. I had fun. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a party. I wasn't. Hey, I wasn't at one of them parties. We ain't seen that party. What party? What party are you talking about? What party? What party? We ain't seen that. I have been in attendance at, at a puff party. You know what I'm saying? I've been in attendance. Yeah, yeah, uh, I went. Yeah, dang. but I ain't. Yeah, nah. What? Well, I don't know which party. The party I went to. <laughs> It was girls just turn up, you know what I'm saying? The regular, you know what I mean? Other celebrities and shit, yeah. That's what you do with the line when you say, I ain't been to one of them parties. Wait, what party? Oh, that's crazy. Did you, you know, I ain't been to one of them so I thought it was only one type of party. What nah, you mean, that nah, party? Nah, nah, nah. I don't know. I'm just saying. I, 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 I don't watch some of y'all podcasts. I see y'all talking about Let me ask you a question. What's up? Jay Z being exposed, the streets are now talking about one of Jay Z's biggest secrets that could ruin everything for him. And that's word of his outside babies. Y'all know how there have been reports of Jay-Z cheating on Beyonce? Well, there are also some lesser known rumors about how he has multiple outside babies on her. While he allegedly paid some of his supposed baby mamas off, there is one who's still fighting to be acknowledged by Jay-Z, and that's a young man called Ramir Satterthwaite. So for anyone who hasn't been keeping up with this drama, Ramir is saying that back in the 90s, Jay-Z and his mom, Wanda, had a little fling. Apparently they did use protection, but it didn't work, and that's how Ramir came into the picture. Wanda couldn't get in touch with Jay-Z after that because they lost contact. When Ramir was born, her boyfriend at the time ended up signing the birth certificate. According to an insider, her on-off boyfriend at the time, Robert, knew the baby wasn't his, but put his name on the birth certificate while Wanda was unconscious, recovering from the birth. Initially, he felt sorry for Wanda, but later he used it so he could collect extra food stamps and benefits. Both were minors at the time, so he shouldn't have signed anything. Ramirez has been spilling even more tea, saying that when he was just eight, his mom Wanda dropped the bomb that Jay-Z was his real dad. She apparently tried everything to reach him, hoping he'd step up and take responsibility, but kept getting shut down by lawyers and publicists. But Wanda was a fighter. She didn't back down. She took the legal route and went after Jay-Z in court to find out if he was really Ramirez's biological father. Unfortunately, the judge threw the case out, saying the court didn't have jurisdiction. Sadly, Wanda passed away 
not long after, but before she did, she signed a sworn affidavit declaring that Sean Carter, aka Jay-Z, was indeed Ramirez's father. you think all this would finally push Jay-Z to take some action, but nope, he's been silent. So Ramirez, with the help of his guardian, Lily Coley, decided to file a civil lawsuit in December 2014, revealing they've been trying to get Jay-Z to agree to a DNA test. By this point, the drama had been simmering for four years. Jay-Z maintained he wasn't the father, yet for some strange reason, he wouldn't take the test. Like seriously, you'd think he'd just get it over with, right? Now this lawsuit has been dragging on for about 10 years, 14 if you include Wanda's initial lawsuit, and Jay-Z still refusing. That's pretty suspicious. Ramirez was upset about the situation and he agreed to do a sit-down interview with The Sun online where he denied that he was after Jay-Z's money saying, I don't want money or anything like that from Jay-Z. I just want him to finally tell the truth to the world. He's supposed to be a positive role model for our community. He stands there screaming Black Lives Matter. Well, tell the truth and take responsibility. And if you say I'm not your son and nothing ever happened with my mom, then just take the test. If you are telling the truth, then why is this your first answer whenever you're asked to take a paternity test? No. His guardian, Lily, also spoke and we finally found out something interesting about the situation and that's the fact that Jay-Z had knocked Wanda up when she was only 16 and he was 22. Yeah, the math was starting to math and Lily said, Wanda was only 16 when she allegedly met Sean but she may have told him she was older. She fell pregnant but had no idea how to contact him. To be fair, Lily did reveal that Wanda told Jay-Z she was 18 so he had no idea about her real age. But even if it wasn't technically his fault, it was still- I just had a question. I'm just trying to tell all these young cats out there trying to come up, you know, like, where do you think they gotta go to? From your point of view, you know what I'm saying? What is the best advice you could give them? Because I'll be telling them, like, my best advice is they gotta do it a whole new way, a different way, like, like, like they from another planet. But coming from you, coming from the man of, of, of men right now, tell them something, tell them something good. I mean, first of all, you want to stay away from these diddy bop motherfuckers. Motherfuckers dancing all on the motherfucking stage and shit. They want your ass. We call them astronauts. So be afraid. Be very afraid. You really ain't built for the game. Uh, something. Something. Something no, like that. No, we trying to be famous. Like, you gonna run into a motherfucker like that. 